Thank you very much. The next item of business is consideration of business motion 8084 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau setting out a revised business programme for today and tomorrow. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak button now. And I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 8084. Formally moved. Uh, thank you very much. No member has asked to speak against the motion. The question, therefore, is that motion 8084 be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. Uh, members may wish to note that uh, decision time will be at 6 o'clock this evening, just to make sure everyone's aware. The next item of business is topical questions. And we start with question number one from Sandra White. Thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government further to the statement issued on the 16th of September, what its response is to the violence that took place during the independence referendum in Catalonia. Cabinet Secretary Fiona Hislop. The Scottish Government is very concerned about events in recent days in Catalonia. The violent scenes uh, witnessed on Sunday were shocking and unnecessary, and this is a, a view shared amongst the international community. The Scottish Government are particularly disappointed by the response of the UK Government to the violent scenes, Yesterday, I wrote to the Foreign Secretary, Boris Johnson, urging the UK as a friend and ally of Spain to issue a more robust statement, unequivocally condemning the use of violence by Spanish police to suppress the peaceful expression of political views in Catalonia and communicating in the strongest possible terms our serious concerns. The Scottish Government now hope that there is a process of dialogue that will allow both the Spanish and Catalonian governments to find a way forward that respects the rule of law, respects democracy, but also respects the right of the people of Catalonia to decide the future of their country. Sandra White. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for her reply and do agree with all she has said. Cabinet Secretary mentioned the fact that she had written to the Foreign Secretary in Westminster. Can you ask the Cabinet Secretary if there are any further meetings being put forward and what would be discussed at these further meetings in regard between dialogue and has she had any correspondence with the Spanish and Catalonian governments as well? Cabinet Secretary. On the latter point, there's been no uh, correspondence, although I had a brief opportunity to speak to the Spanish Consul General when he was here in this Parliament uh, last week. Uh, the importance of dialogue and uh, communication and indeed mediation is absolutely essential. If you look at the comments from across the European Union, from foreign ministers from across the European Union, their message has been of one of desisting on violence and progressing on dialogue. There'll be responsibilities, I think, particularly for uh, European institutions, but also um, for other international bodies. And I think that is the best way forward. Certainly we can express our views, but we have always said we understand that the situation, the constitutional situation and the legal situation in Spain is different. But this is a basic issue of human rights and democracy and fundamental rights of uh, democracy and the case and the ability of people to express their political will and express their political views without fear of violence is something that all of us, all of us as internationalists and most importantly as Democrats must uphold. Sandra White. Uh, thank you very much, President Officer, and I certainly agree that dialogue is essential, as do the Catalonian uh, government as well. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, having witnessed the horrific violence by Spanish police against innocent civilians exercising their democratic right to vote, can I ask the Cabinet Secretary if she agrees with UN High Commissioner for Human Rights when he said, I'm very disturbed by the violence in Catalonia on Sunday, with hundreds of people reported injured. I urge the Spanish authorities to ensure through independent and partial investigations into all acts of violence, and I call on the government of Spain to accept without delay the request by relevant UN human rights experts to visit Spain. Cabinet Secretary. I, I do indeed. I think the intervention from the UN High Commissioner on Human Rights was welcome. I think it was appropriate and it was also measured, but it's also a reflection that uh, abuses of human rights, wherever they take place, 
uh, must be investigated and to respect the international uh, perspective on that and the importance of respecting human rights as part of uh, the UN Charter and their responsibilities therein. I think that's one of the ways forward, particularly to address what I think has shocked so many people across the globe, is the scenes of violence and very brutal violence by the Spanish police uh, under the instruction of the Spanish authorities on people going about what all of us in this country can take for granted, which is democratic exercise of the right to vote. It is not our job to tell the people of Catalonia how to vote, but they most certainly should have the right to be allowed to vote. And I think finding a way forward that respects the differences that are here, where you have a clash between the rights uh, of uh, fundamental rights uh, that, that are expressed by uh, and desired by and should be exercised by the Catalan people with the constitution and law of the Spanish state. Uh, these are not irre irreconcilable, uh, but it will take international uh, measures. And that's why I think we're particularly either the EU institutions or the UN must have a responsibility to try and take this forward. Jackson Carlo. Uh, does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that whatever the thinking of the authorities and government of Spain, there was clearly little rational about it, and that whatever the intentions they may have had, their actions will have proved to be wholly counterproductive? And does she agree with me that this is deeply damaging, potentially, to the reputation of Spain, a country for which many of us really have the fondest uh, and most high regard? Cabinet Secretary. I do indeed uh, reflect and, and respect and agree with Jackson Carlo's comments. Um, I think that the actions by the Spanish uh, government has done themselves a disservice and I think will eventually prove uh, counterproductive. Uh, and it's important that they uh, address that and indeed in, engage in that dialogue that uh, we've been uh, discussing in my previous replies. But it is absolutely essential that this situation cannot be allowed to pass and will not pass. And I know there have been diplomatic statements made, but I hope in the, the quietness of the private conversations that can and should be made place, uh, Spain can be brought to, to, I think, more of a common sense and respectful position than they have clearly up until down. And Christina McKelvey. Thank you very much, President Officer. As we have seen from the violent scenes on Sunday perpetrated by the Spanish government's civil guards, there seems to be little regard for the upholding of civil liberties and human rights. Does the Scottish Government agree with me and with Article 2 of the Lisbon Treaty that we are all bound to the fundamental principles of respect for human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality and the rule of law and respect for human rights and that these principles should always be the foundations to which we uphold the rights of European citizens. Cabinet Secretary. The member is indeed correct and I think uh, in this place, in this parliament where we are um, embracing the importance of human rights right across uh, a number of committees, not least the one that the member uh, convenes, that those messages of uh, our recognition of that's one of the, 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 the aspects of Article 2 or one of the strengths of the European Union. Now is a time when people are looking to the European Union for some leadership that actually expression and understanding um, of those rights uh, in this context could be best served by mediation or negotiation and some involvement by the EU institutions in resolving what it currently is a very intractable situation but one that must be resolved by dialogue and of peace um, and of democracy. Question number two, Daniel Johnson. What its response is to the reports that there are almost twice as many under 10s being prescribed stimulants than there were in 2010. Minister Maureen Watt. The Scottish Government has worked with a number of organisations to help reduce the stigma faced by people with mental health problems. As this stigma has fallen, it is welcome that more people and families come forward for help with mental health problems. We believe it is a positive sign that people feel more able to come forward to get help. The rise in prescriptions for ADHD is reflective of the general increase in demand for child and adolescent mental health services. The majority of young people with ADHD are not receiving medication as part of their treatment, instead receiving alternative support as set out in SIGN 112 guidelines. The most important consideration is that people with any mental illness should expect and receive the same standard of care as people with physical in illness. Any prescribing is a professional clinical decision for a patient's doctor with them and should be appraised on a regular basis. Daniel Johnson. 
Can I thank the Minister for that response? Uh, Presiding Officer, uh, I received my diagnosis of ADHD late in life at the age of 35. My diagnosis and subsequent therapy have transformed my life, but the most important element of that therapy is the medication that I take on a daily basis. My only regret is that I didn't receive that diagnosis and indeed that therapy earlier in life. The Minister will have seen the coverage in yesterday's Herald, part of a weekly series they are running on Scotland's supposed over-reliance on drugs. But the Royal College of Psychiatrists is clear, if anything, we are probably under-diagnosing children with ADHD, with the rate of prescribing being roughly one-third that of the children with the most serious form of ADHD. So does the Minister agree with me that such sensationalist coverage and comments from the Conservatives are unhelpful and that we should be seeking to promote understanding of this condition, not stigmatising children who take medication for ADHD and indeed other mental health and neurological conditions. Minister. Presiding officer, can I thank the member very much for sharing his experience of ADHD uh, with the chamber this afternoon. He is absolutely right that more people have uh, children and young people have ADHD than, than are coming forward and fewer people are prescribed drugs uh, um, and more people uh, alternative therapies. I thank him for, say, for showing that medication has an important part to play, but I would re-emphasise it is in consultation uh, with the person's GP and hopefully that they can be reduced if that is the right thing to do. And I totally agree with him on his uh, observation of the opposition benches. Daniel Johnson. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. And again, can I thank the Minister for that response? And I quite agree in the need to emphasise the importance of, of medication. Uh, responding to the coverage, the Scottish ADHD Coalition stated the need for better training of our teachers and access to CAMS. We know from the Education and Skills Committee recent work that teachers are not adequately trained in additional support needs. And while in schools across the rest of the UK there are counsellors, in Scotland schools there is no guarantee for such provision. Will the Minister outline what steps will be made to improve training for teachers in dealing with children with ADHD and other additional support needs? And will she meet my party's call for every school to have access to a counsellor? Yes. Well, as the member will know, and I thank him for, his, uh, for the question, um, part one of the 40 actions in the mental health strategy is a review of PSE and schools. And some schools already provide uh, access to uh, school-based counselling. Others utilise the skills of pastoral staff uh, and liaise with educational psychology services. But we, we want to make sure that all children and young people get the support they need to reach their full potential. And the Additional Support for Learning Act places education authority on education authorities' duties to identify, provide and review for additional support needs. But we are taking forward the, uh, the PSE review as, as, as expeditiously as possible. Miles Briggs. Signing officer, is the Minister confident that families across Scotland are always being offered access to high quality behavioural therapists? And what additional action is the Scottish Government planning to take to increase the number of behavioural therapists available to support parents and primary, primary age children and to reduce waiting times for this therapy? Minister. Um, well, as I said in my answer to Daniel Johnson, there are um, access to services available through school and the Scottish Government has worked with Education Scotland to produce a psychological therapies matrix, a guide to planning and deliver delivering evidence-based psychological therapies uh, in Scotland. And the, ma the matrix dedicates a section to ADHD. So drugs for ADHD are prescribed in line with good clinical practice uh, under ongoing supervision. Um, and where uh, appropriate, but as I said, they are used alongside other treatments psych such as counselling and psychological therapies. And Claire Hockey. Thank you, Presiding Officer, and can I thank uh, Daniel Johnson for sharing um, his story of diagnosis and treatment. It's vitally important that those of us in this chamber do break down the stigma surrounding mental illness at all ages. Um, can I ask the, the Minister uh, what has been the change in the number of CAMS professionals under this government, and in particular, what has been the change in the number of CAMS psychology posts? 
Minister. Um, so, uh, under this government, the number of CAM psychological posts have more than doubled, and the overall number of CAMS professionals has increased by 65% to almost 1,000 whole time equivalent staff. Question number three, Brian Whittle. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the Scottish Government, in light of the Health Secretary's comments in June, when she said that the country's stillbirth rates and neonatal death rates continue to decline, what its response is to the recent report by the National Records of Scotland, which suggests an increase in the rate in 2016. Cabinet Secretary Shona Robertson. In my statement to Parliament in June, I highlighted the findings of the Embrace perinatal report on the 2015 data that had been published a few days previously on the 22nd of June. The report highlighted the lowest ever stillbirth rates for Scotland and also the analysis of variation across the UK at national and health board level. The provisional 2016 data from NRS does show a rise in both stillbirth and neonatal death rates in 2016. And while this is disappointing, it is against a long-term trend of reducing rates. NRS data for the last 10 years show that since 2006, the stillbirth rate in Scotland has fallen by 19% and the neonatal death rate by 16%. This represents good news for families and good progress by the hard-working staff in maternity and neonatal units across Scotland. Brian Whittle. Can I thank the Cabinet Secretary for that answer and perhaps I could ask her to explain, given that the NS NRS report was available to her at the time of her statement, why she chose to use the Embrace report from 2015, given the Embrace report doesn't include such statistics as multiple births and home births. Cabinet Secretary. Well, first of all, the Embrace perinatal report uh, on the 2015 data was just published a few days uh, previously on the 22nd of June, so it was the most recent Embrace perinatal report, which of course is the, the, the gold standard of reports which compares rates across uh, the UK and between health boards. The provisional 2016 NRS data was first published in, on the 8th of March, but the data remains provisional for a full year because there's sometimes a delay in data being reported and sometimes the data needs uh, cleansed. The data becomes finalised after the end of a year, uh, next March 2018, and will feature in the Embrace Perinatal Surveillance Report to be published next summer, which will be based on the 2016 NRS data, and which will provide an indication of the relative rates of stillbirth and neonatal death across the UK. I hope that provides an explanation to, to Mr Whittle. Mr Whittle. Thank you. In case that concludes topical questions, we'll now move on to our next